Ladies and gentlemen, author and YouTuber, John Green. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Specifically, y'all. Also, to a lesser extent, y'all. Um, I'm. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Google, for that lovely introduction, and and my old friend Grace Helbig. I'm so proud of her success and the fact that now uh, she gets to be both an independent content creator and live her dream of uh, having a television show. Anyway, I'm John Green. Uh, I'm a novelist and. YouTuber, and unlike the uh, other people on stage tonight, I'm not here uh, to entertain you, or to educate you, or to kiss up to you. Uh, I am here to scare you. Most of the people who are here tonight uh, are going to tell you why you should advertise on YouTube, uh, but I I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to offer you a vision of what I think will happen if you don't. First, a little bit of background. Uh, my first novel, Looking for Alaska, came out in 2005. Thank you very much. Um, it was uh, one month, almost exactly, before the first ever video was uploaded to YouTube. Uh, you might have heard that it's YouTube's 10th anniversary. Have they mentioned that to you guys? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've never seen anybody be so excited about turning 10. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, yeah, congratulations, YouTube. You're a multi-billion dollar company owned by the world's largest corporation that's done something that only fourth graders can do. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, uh, not relevant to my talk. Uh, so my book came out, got great reviews, it won a really big award, uh, and it sold about 8,000 copies in its first year, uh, what you might call uh, a modest success. Ten years later, uh, my novel, The Fall in Our Stars, uh, has been on the New York Times bestseller list now for 161 consecutive weeks. Uh, the film adaptation <laughs> grossed $300 million at the box office worldwide. So two books uh, and two very different results. How did that happen? Well, the success of The Fall in Our Stars uh, is complicated, um, but there, I can say this. There is no way that it would have happened without YouTube. On January 1st, 2007, my brother Hank and I uh, started a project called Brotherhood 2.0 in which we made YouTube videos back and forth to each other each weekday. And eight years later, we're still at it. And through these videos, we developed an incredible community of fans who call themselves nerd fighters <laughs> because, <laughs> because they celebrate uh, intellectualism and fight for nerds. And, and this community does all kinds of amazing things together. They've loaned more than $4 million to mostly female entrepreneurs in the developing world through Kiva. They run the Project for Awesome. As you guys heard, the Project for Awesome is this annual 48-hour uh, fundraiser and event where thousands of YouTubers across the platform make videos about their favorite charities and raise money for organizations like Save the Children and Partners in Health. Last year, in two days, we raised over $1.2 million from 21,000 different donors. And with, thanks. And with the support of, uh, of this community, uh, we've been able to expand our online video projects as well. In 2012, uh, we launched SciShow and Crash Course, our educational channel. SciShow is a celebration of scientific inquiry and discovery, and Crash Course introduces topics from chemistry to world history at an AP level, and it's now used in thousands of schools around the world, including, I would imagine, some of your, your children's. There is tremendous hunger for educational and how-to content on the internet. People want context. They want well-researched information that can be presented to them accessibly. And that's why Crash Course and SciShow both have over 2.5 million subscribers. Hank and I also own uh, DFTBA Records, which is uh, this company that distributes music and merchandise for YouTubers who build audiences online. And each year, we pay out millions of dollars uh, to YouTube creators in royalties. So we've had a lot of success because of YouTube. 
But uh, this is the part that, that should, should scare you a little bit. Um, for the most part, we have done all of this without advertising. Crash Course and SciShow are funded mainly by viewers who voluntarily donate to support the shows through Patreon. DFTBA Records provides more revenue from merch than we've ever made from ads, not just for us, but for many YouTubers. And today, Hank and I employ over 30 people who help us to create these shows that are both educational and fun to watch. And even though our subscribers and views have grown tenfold in the last three years, Less than 20% of our company's revenue comes from advertising, and it decreases by 5% every year. Now, of course, that isn't true for all online video, and I understand that, and I, I want to be honest about that. Uh, you know, lots, of, lots and lots of online content is well supported by advertising, and it's geared toward advertising models. But many of the strongest communities, and many of the ones I value the most in online video, are dramatically undervalued by advertisers. And that's forcing YouTubers to find other paths. They're doing events, and they're publishing books, they're crowdfunding, and they're producing albums, and they're getting grants from nonprofit organizations. In short, they are building a world where they don't have to depend on advertising, and they are thriving. You may not see that success, but I promise it's happening. Ask these kids. <laughs> And speaking of them, uh, I, I'm sure that you're uh, familiar with the uh, tired narrative about young people these days, that they're only interested in distraction and have no curiosity about the world outside of themselves. Oh, God, I hate it so much. <laughs> Just think that's so stupid and lame. Who's been clapping? Who's been enthusiastic? Who was dancing along with the dancers? Not you, nerds. While the world talks about the, the you know, insularity and solipsism, solipsism of young people, young people have created a fascinating and complex world of deep engagement online, a world in which they are not just watching content but becoming part of it by being community members whose comments and fan fiction and artwork and passion have profound impacts on our broader culture. And one of those young people was my friend Esther Earle, who you were introduced to in the video and who inspired much of my novel, The Fault in Our Stars. Esther was one of the earliest nerd fighters, and she was a key supporter of the Project for Awesome. And throughout our friendship, she was also living with cancer. I learned from Esther that people with disabilities are not defined by their disabilities, that their lives and loves are as important and complex and meaningful as any others, and that a short life, uh, Esther died in 2010 when she was just 16, can also be a good life and a rich life. Without the YouTube community, I never would have met Esther. I never would have been inspired to write my book. And I may never have learned just how passionate, committed, and caring this new generation of fans can be. Meanwhile, we adults criticize this generation for its apathy and narcissism while watching CSI Miami and The Blacklist and congratulating ourselves on our astonishing intellectual sophistication and connectedness. <laughs> Here's the truth. Way down deep in what Robert Penn Warren once called the darkness which is you, there is a great and terrible feeling that our life and work is meaningless, this clawing fear that everything we do will be for nothing. And CSI Miami is incredibly good at distracting us from that fear. <laughs> I'm not kidding, but I appreciate that you laughed. I, I also uh, think that this is good. I am in favor of distractions, and I think the distraction business is a good and noble business. And because the number of eyeballs a distraction attracts is a reasonably good way of judging the effectiveness of the distraction as a diversion, advertising is a very good model for funding it. But I and the most passionate YouTubers, we're not in the distraction business. We're in the community business. 
and number of eyeballs is a terrible metric for my business. Like I can say our videos have been viewed more than a billion times and it sounds very impressive, I guess, but I, I don't actually care about that number at all. I don't care how many people watch or read something I make. I care how many people love something I make. And that love, That love is a lot tougher to measure. Like, I can happily watch 44 minutes of Deadliest Catch, and I might even tweet about it, but it won't be nearly as important to me as the three minutes I spend with Vihart as she explains to me how we know that the infinite set of real numbers is larger than the infinite set of natural numbers. Deadliest Catch is something I watch. Original content on YouTube, whether it's Let's Play videos or beauty tutorials or, or introductions to Nigerian history, it's something I treasure because it doesn't just distract me from the way down deep darkness. Whether it's funny or silly or profound or smart, what it really does is help me to grapple with and to consider the problems and the questions way down deep there in the darkness. And finally, I have to say that just matters more to me than deadliest catch. So if you want to stay, if you want to stay in the eyeballs business, I think that's cool. I don't blame you. It is a good business, albeit a shrinking one, but you risk, <laughs> you risk losing relevance with an entire generation of viewers that looks to video not just for distraction, but also for engagement and connection. And that's where there is a tremendous opportunity for you in this room tonight and one that you frankly are not gonna find on television or anywhere offline. If you support YouTubers through advertising, we can build and foster better, more diverse communities. If we're able to rely on you for support, we can build the type of engagement that's good for us, good for the world, and finally, also, coincidentally, good for your brands. We could, bring, we could bring more good and interesting stuff into the world, and if you help us do that, our viewers will notice, and they will care, and you will win over this next generation just as you have won over generations in the past. Thank you. <laughs>